Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we are going to combine uh, a feature that's been in InDesign for a long time, which is bullet lists, which allows us to take a list, and uh, let me just turn on um, Show Hidden Characters. You have a list that has a paragraph return at the end of every line. Uh, for a long time, you've been able to select that and then just make it into a bullet list with one click or a numbered list. So that, that's been around for a while. But we're going to combine that reliable old feature with a new feature called paragraph shading to create uh, this effect that you see right here. And uh, it can be stored in a paragraph style. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to apply this paragraph style over here. And there we go. Bingo. Um, with one click, we turned a plain Jane text list into this kind of fancy looking uh, list with uh, uh, little dingbats in, uh, in squares. So let's find out how we did it. That was, it's, uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I hope you guys can stick with me for some sort of detailed instructions here. Before you do this, be very certain that you know exactly how wide your column is going to be because if you change the column width after you've done what we're going to do, it, it kind of messes things up. So first thing, we're just going to style our bullet list. And uh, in order to do that, I just putting my cursor anywhere in this first line and holding down my option key in paragraph uh, styling, I'm going to click on bullet list. And here I get my bullet list controls and I'm going to go to bullets. And that just gives me a plain Jane bullet, and I want to use something a bit fancier. So I can click, I can add uh, characters from any typeface here, and uh, I'm going to add a Zopf Dingbat. And you've got a good selection of them here, uh, and you can try any one of them. Um, and you can even import a few if you want to have some to choose from. Uh, Here's my heart, or this one, add, uh, there. So now you see I have all of these to work with, and I can try them in turn and see which one I want to work with. Uh, I used the heart last time, so let's try the florette uh, this time. That's cool. Uh, I would like to apply a style to it. Uh, you may remember in the demonstration piece that it was a very light pink. So I can create a new character style here. And um, I'm going to call it Light Floret. And go to character color and I'll uh, choose a color. Um, pink. And we can add a tint, maybe 20% make it very light uh, so that it's going to look good uh, as a negative. Well, maybe even a little less, maybe even 18%. That's good. So that's my new uh, character style. And uh, that, uh, that looks good, but it's, it's so light you can't really see it. And I want to make a black, I mean not a black, but a dark uh, square to go around it. And that's where the paragraph shading comes in. Let's click this and create a new paragraph style. New paragraph style, I'm going to call it floor, Floret List. And uh, click OK. That's good. And now I want to apply that to this whole list so I can kind of see how it's going to look. And, Right away, I just think, oh dear, I really wanted that to be in, in, indented a little more. And just always be aware that you can edit your styles once they're created. And uh, so let's go in here and look into bullets and numbering. And uh, I see here my left indent is not really going on here. And I can indent that a little bit, and I like that better. So then, I'm going to click OK. Um, 
And now is the time to add, let me just go back into that, to add my paragraph shading. And if you have not been into InDesign for a while, you may not have noticed paragraph shading. It's a brand new feature in 2015, and it lives right under paragraph rules, and it works a little bit the same. So we'll go to paragraph shading here, making sure our preview is turned on, and then we're going to click shading on. And uh, that's not the color I want, of course. So uh, I'm going to choose dark brown. And right now, it's just shading uh, my entire line. And what I want to do is push it so it's just behind my little floret. In order to do that, um, uh, by the way, you might note that if we go here to leading, it's solid. And we're going to leave it at a cent here. And I have to break that little chain so that I can have different values. And I'm, I'm noticing right now that it's uh, the flower, floret is closer to the top than the bottom of that. And I'm going to fix that first. I'm going to reduce the bottom a little bit and increase the top a little bit so it looks like it's kind of more centered. And now what I want to do is create um, a negative um, indent here. So on the left, I'm going to say choose a, a minus two picas and see what that does for me. Off and on. That's way too much. So let's try a minus one pica. Off and on. Little, not quite enough. So there are 12 points in a pica. So if I want to do one and a half picas, it's minus one P6. Uh, maybe. Yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So let's work on the right indent now. Uh, it also has to be negative because it's going to be coming in from the edge of the column. So we're going to try, just for starters, we'll try uh, maybe minus. 9 pike, not 99, sorry, 90 would be way too much. Minus 9 pike, so let's see what that does for us. Yeah, not enough. So uh, let's try maybe 15, minus 15. That's getting a little closer. So now we can just kind of click on the little down button and just do it by eye till you like the way it looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Um, click OK. So this is good as far as it is, but I think I would like to change the, the uh, type a little bit here. So if I go back into Floret List and I go to Basic Character Formats, you can see it's just Minion Pro Regular here. Uh, I'm not going to do anything too fancy. I'm just going to change it to uh, semi-bold. And that gives it a little bit more weight. And I think it holds up a little bit better right there. So uh, there we are. Hide my hidden characters. And any bullet list, any place that I went and typed a bunch of returns, I can apply floret list with one uh, click, and I, I think that's uh, pretty cool. The reason that I mentioned to you to be sure about your column width is since this is based on an inset from the edges of the type frame, if I squish it this way, the shading is going to get driven out. You can see, and if I pull it out this way, it's going to get driven in. So this isn't really the way InDesign intended this feature to be used. It's just kind of a little, I guess you'd call it a trick or a workaround. Uh, but I enjoyed working out how to do it, and I hope you might find some use for it. So thank you for watching.